your, uh, your abs I always fly Virgin because I like Richard Branson. You know, what, what did I just say that I like him? I've just admitted it myself. I've got an emotional connection. I've never met him. My wife has. She's had dinner with him, which I'm very jealous of. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, but you're absolutely right. And the, the thing is, though, it's online. It's actually quite easy to do that. If you're a, if you think, I think this business suits people. If you, if you like, I mean, I'm going to say something now, which sounds like obviously everybody likes this but if you just like uh, being true to yourself and you're not putting on any airs and graces there's never been this opportunity like this before in our lifetime the thing I love about the web is that imagine your name is Jean and you're 50 years old and you've got three kids and you live in Arkansas and you might be thinking well what have I got that anybody could even be remotely interested in well I'll tell you what you've got Jean you've got the fact that you're Jean you're 50 you've got three kids and you're in Arkansas that's what you've got young lady and suddenly, imagine if you made a video saying, hi, my name's Gene, I'm from Arkansas, I've got three kids, uh, I've, I'm new to this, I've never done this before, but I've created a little book about how to, um, how to do cross-stitching, if that was your niche, and um, I'm giving it away for free. Suddenly, as you said, Joe, people buy into you, and this is how I started, you know. I, I get a few people saying to me, Chris, well, it's all right for you, you know, you kind of, um, you know, you've got a list now, you, you, know, you know how to create a website, you know how to drive traffic, and I always say, Guys, 2008, I was sweating online. I had my legal pads galore, making copious notes up to four in the morning, going to Google, going to forums. I didn't know any of this. I didn't know anybody in this business. I wasn't gifted. I didn't know people. I didn't know the Mike Phil Sames or the Frank Kearns or the Jeff Johnsons or Jeff Walkers of the world like I do now. But I've only managed to do all this just through hard work. And Brian Tracy talks very well um, about sense of entitlement, and um, as you, I think you know, Joe, I've, I've become friends with Brian. Actually, I've, I've done a few talks with him now, and being asked to do another one in London. Which I'm trying to get you involved with as well, which should be exciting. But more news about that, shh, hopefully soon. <laughs> uh, but he talks about sense of entitlement, and he says that in this day and age, um, many, I think, the exception of those listening to this call right now, because you know many on this call, you've already given up 35 minutes of your time to listen to this, but many people these days in the 21st century will, will have a sense of entitlement, and what that means is that many will feel that they spent four hours at the weekend trying to do something online, or they create a simple website, uh, and therefore they should make money, and it's like, well, why, why, sh why should that be the case? Because we live in a very sense of entitlement society. I'm entitled to make money online, why? Well, you know, I've worked hard. What have you actually done? You spent, what, a week, two weeks? Um, this is a business. Yeah. This is a business, first and foremost. In any other business, it's common business practice, and any business expert will tell you this, to allow yourself two years before you see profit. Two years. That's the common time period for any, any business, two years. Yeah. Now, a web business, you can slash that, and you can slash that dramatically. But it still took me personally six months. Um, but many still believe, because it's a web business, that they can do it in next to no time. I think I think the problem is for a lot of people that this is the first time that many have actually worked for themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's to be applauded. But the problem with that uh, comes with the fact that many will not be prepared to think, OK, I'm going to have to learn some new skills first. Social media is one of those. And there will be times of frustration. There will be times when you'll go to bed at 2 o'clock. There will be times when your partner will be saying, what are you doing again? Yeah. Uh, you will get all that. And if you can push through despite that, regardless of the fact it's a web business, then eventually you will come out the other side. But you will have that little voice of fear and that voice of doubt sitting on your shoulder at times, which we all do. Mm. And my kind of question to you is, how do you react to that? Do you give up despite, uh, do you give up rather because of that? Or do you push through despite that? And if you can do the latter, I think I mentioned my closing thought, Joe, I think I mentioned once to you when we were having a, a coffee here in Los Angeles, because Joe and I have met a few times. Fascinating study I read about uh, millionaires, and it said the, the average, well, actually, the, it started off by saying the average amount of times that somebody, an average person, will try something new and see it through to completion. So the average number of times that somebody will try something new, let's say creating a website, and see it through to completion, i.e., they've actually created a website and got it online, the average person will try it less than once. Less than once, not even once, less than once, which means the average person won't even see it through to completion. 
And that's true. You look at people that join a gym in January and they've quit by February or they start a book and they never finish it. It's absolutely true. Yet the average millionaire, and again, I'm not trying to just judge things on a financial figure, but the average millionaire tries something new and sees it through to completion 17 times. 17! So we have to say to ourselves, if we really want this web business to work, are we really prepared to invest a bit of time? And are we prepared, once we hit a brick wall on a problem, which you will, are we going to throw our toys out of the pram and say, it's a con, it's a scam, you can't make any money online? Well, if you are, secretly, in your heart of hearts, you know you're only saying that to make yourself feel better for quitting. Because it's not a con, it's not a scam. I've met some of the greatest people online. Uh, financially, you know, I've never been so financially successful in my life and I've done it all in two years but it was work first and social media is allowing us to speed up our learning curve. Joe you and I have spoken about there's such a, a huge demand just for social media managers or people that understand social media. Yeah. Imagine if that was your skill, imagine if you could go to local businesses and say look I know how I can get you more traffic, more customers, more bottom line, more money through mastering social media. That alone is a skill that will have you in employment for years. Did you know, know Joe, one in two people, one in two people, uh, so every other person on this call yeah. in two years time will be doing a different job. 50%, statistically talking, 50% of people in two years time will be doing a different job. And Joe, you're a good example of that. Two years ago you weren't doing internet marketing. No. Were you? No. And, I, I, and two years ago, I only just started. Business, yeah. You were in prison, weren't you? I was in prison. Oh, sorry, was that yeah. supposed to be a secret? <laughs> so, <laughs> so if, if everyone on this call is comfortable with embracing change, and uh, change is good, change is exciting. You know, this is what kind of makes me... People often say to me, how do you I manage to work like so many hours a day and don't really get tired? It's because I get excited about change and mm. I don't like to kind of look back at the stuff that we did two years ago or a year ago. Let's look forward to the future. Social media, you know, we're, we're new, it's new to all of us. I'm working with tons of names in this business and most of them don't understand social media, so don't think we're too late. Mm. Joe Barnes is by far the, 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 the best social media teacher I have found online. Um, she, you know, she, and you've worked at it, Joe, and you've got a real good talent of explaining it clearly. But I think it all comes down to, wouldn't you say, just as cliche as it sounds, just actually impl implementing what you learn? You know, t I mean, thank you for saying that, Chris. I do appreciate that. But seriously, it's um, I. What, what you've done with your business is is all along over the last couple of years, the videos and everything that you've produced, you've learned something new, then you've recorded it and taught somebody else how to do it. And that's exactly yeah. what I started doing with Facebook. I just literally thought, okay, I'm going to learn how to do this. And as I'm learning, I'm going to teach somebody how to do it. I'm not going to go out there and say, hey, guys, guess what? I'm an absolute expert because I'm not. I'm completely new to Facebook. Um, and all I'm doing is literally learning something new and then recording it and teaching somebody else how to do it. Well, that's perfect, and that's you know, and I bet some some will probably say, "Well, Joe, you can make a video. It's all right for you. You know how to make a video." But you had to teach yourself how to make videos, didn't you? Oh, don't you remember when I actually um, spoke I, to you after? I, I do, and I was in tears because <laughs> I couldn't, I yeah. couldn't record the video. I couldn't upload it. I couldn't work out how to put a skin on it, and <laughs> and uh, and I spoke to you a couple of weeks after I'd figured it out, didn't I? And I said to you, I was in absolutely. It took me hours and hours and hours just to figure out how to do it, and head in hand and tears and all that kind of stuff so you know it t like, like you just but let me ask you this and sorry Go on. we're going on a slight tangent here are you glad now I mean maybe you're not but honestly are you glad now that you did sort of almost struggle learning how to do let's say video marketing at first now looking back oh definitely yeah, definitely. Without really, that's doubt. fascinating. Because why, because why is that? Well, because I put myself through that moment of pain, I suppose, um, because I took the time to really get to know exactly how to do it, um, I, I then ad adopted a new skill. And so by the end of it, and I was able to then do it, I was incredibly proud of myself. I felt really... Um, triumphant, yeah. you know, and thought, ah, oh, just I now know how to do that, you know, and I've got a skill. And then when I was on your forum, for instance, and a gentleman on there asked, 
how do I do this? I don't know how to do this. I got very excited and immediately jumped about recording a video on exactly how to do it and sent it to him because I was so proud. <laughs> I thought I can do that. You know, and a You're year terrific. ago, a year ago, I knew nothing about, you know, techni technical stuff and I was a complete technophobe. So, you know. Do you know what I think is something about internet marketing that not many people talk about and it kind of leads on really nicely from your point and this will sound a little bit grand so forgive me but the thing I love about this business, absolutely love, more so than the making money, now of course making the money is obviously great, obviously I don't need to say that, um, but I do think you actually have to become a slightly better person just generally in life. You just I think I have actually become a slightly better person. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by better is someone that is prepared and understands and keeps calm and when problems arise I'm just better at dealing with them. I think okay, this isn't working as I want it to. I don't know the answer, but I know that there is an answer, so I'm not going to get stressed, I'm not going to get frustrated, I'm just going to be calm. And I'm going to ask somebody, or I'm going to Google, or I'm going to go to YouTube. There's always solutions to everything. One thing I have learned about this: there's always a solution. The thing is, though, even if you if you don't know what it is at that time, don't worry. There's a solution out there. You just don't know what it is right now. It's a bit like a variation of a theme. There's a guy called Jim Rowan, who I love, a great personal developer guy. He sadly passed away at the beginning of this year, and he he taught me something about money actually and relationships to money. I used to say, as indeed probably most people did, you would, if something was a lot of money or you couldn't afford it, you'd say, oh, that's too expensive. You know, if there's a training course online or anything, people say, oh, it's too expensive. You know, can you get it cheaper? Mm -hmm. And do you know what? That's actually the wrong thing to say. It's not too expensive. If a car is $25,000 and you can't afford it, um, it's not too expensive. What it is, is you can't afford it. And actually, there's a big difference between something being too expensive and somebody not being able to afford something. It's a mindset thing. Something if it's, if there's, if there's a training course online for two thousand dollars, I think two thousand dollars I can't afford that. The, the the issue is actually not that it's too expensive. It's the fact that someone can't afford it. So what I'm saying is, don't wish that something was cheaper. Wish that you were better. Jim Rowan talks about don't wish that things were easier online. Wish that you were better. Yeah. And that really harpooned me. Don't wish that this business was easier. Wish that you had more skills. And when you start thinking like that, and I'm only saying this to follow on from your analogy of learning videos, you know, I bet at times you thought, gosh, I wish this was easier. Yeah. But actually, no, it's good that you had to go through that pain because now you understand it. Not everybody will take the time. Most people will stop. Uh, but you've pushed through that pain barrier and you've now, you're now becoming a master at creating videos. And that alone will set you up for mastering you know Facebook which you are and then whatever you're going to be doing next yeah. because you know that every skill is learnable but when you talk about anyway, the whole, slightly digressing when, when, you talk, yeah. when you talk about the whole you can't afford things as well Robert Kiyosaki always says rather than say I can't afford it change your language and say how can I afford it how can I yes, go out and buy that because then again that just that change of language changes your mindset again so rather than immediately closing something off and making it not possible you're changing your language you're saying okay well hold on a second let's get rid of that and say how can it be possible do you know it's interesting you say that kind of on a to take that slightly further as well dr wayne dyer because i'm really interested as you are in personal development as well and i want to eventually do more in that but dr wayne dyer talks about how most people in life and i've been guilty of this will say something like uh, you know i want more money and they'll, they'll think about it all during the day. It's pr one of the primary thoughts on most people's minds. You know, I want more money, and whether you're in the shower or making the kids dinner or in the car, you know, somewhere in your mind you think about, I want more money, I want more money. And what you're actually doing is you, if you believe in this, and I know some might think this is just sounding a bit spiritual nonsense, but um, I believe in this, is that what you think about is what you end up creating, as cliche as it sounds. But if you're going to continually think, be thinking, I want more money, then what are you doing? You're actually creating more of, I want more money. So you're continually living in a I want more money space. You're not actually getting out of that and into the I've got more money, but you're continually wanting more money, which means you'll spend the rest of your life wanting more money because that's all you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. So just like you said, it often requires a slight change of thinking. And in fact, Dr. Wayne Dyer actually says you need to start saying, you know, um, I have enough money and I allow what I already have enough of to continue to flow to me. And I do this myself. I start. I kind of say that, and you know, I know some will think it's just mumbo jumbo. But I did that when I began. I, I started thinking, okay, I actually have enough money, uh, and I allow whatever I have 
to continue to flow to me and I stopped kind of living in that scarcity mindset of thinking, oh, I want more money, I need more money, how can I make more money? And I started living in an abundance mindset. Now, again, I know we're slightly going into personal development here, but it's it's certainly interlinked with internet marketing. Yeah. So, um, have you just left, Joe? Sorry, I hope no. Joe. That was Joe slamming the door. No, I've gone now, Chris. It's mine. Yeah, that was my four-year-old daughter <laughs> trying to get in the room. <laughs> oh, little Karis. Hello, Karis. <laughs> she uh, she she wants to come in and talk to mummy. Um, Chris, no. we have, this has been a real long one, which would be great. This is, uh, I, everybody listening to this call, I think you can see we have digressed a little bit, but we've gone into so many areas, I think, of how, of mindset and all sorts of different things on how you can really go for it and be successful in this game. So um, it's been an incredibly valuable discussion. So thanks, thanks so much, Chris, and thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it, and I know so will everybody else. Joe, it's a real pleasure, and uh, you know I'm ever so impressed with what you're doing, how you conduct yourself on and offline. I've spoken to a ton of people that you've spent time. People probably don't even know this about you, helping them out one to one, making them videos, and just being a general good soul. And um, that's what it's all about in the long run. And it will come back at you tenfold. And I know you're not doing it just for that reason, but all power to you, Joe. And Joe Barnes, honestly, she's. Um, She's, she's, I, I say this to most people now, she's one of the names to, to look out for in, in internet marketing and social media. So I'll be at the front of the, front of the audience when you do your first few talks, Joe. Thank and, uh, you, Chris. Can't wait to see you there. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And, um, but anybody who's listening, I just want you to know, I mean, you know, we, we, we all have an, an awful lot of respect for Chris, so uh, you can imagine how I'm feeling hearing him say that to me. But guys, you know what? Any single one of you, <laughs> any single one of you listening now could could be doing exactly what I'm doing. All you have to do is just, you know, take some action, start building some relationships, um, start making a name for yourself, focus on giving value and, uh, you know, teaching people stuff. And before you know it, um, you know, you'll be you'll be heading in exactly the same direction. So, yeah, anyway, it's, it is true. It is true. <laughs> So, Chris, thank you ever so much. Um, I'm going to let you go. I can see it's quarter past 11 uh, where you are now in the evening. So thank you ever so much for your time again, and uh, I'll look forward to speaking to you very, very soon. Joe, my pleasure, and thank you, everyone, for your time. Talk to you soon, Joe. Bye-bye. Thanks, Chris. Bye.